What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm starting a new video series. This series is going to be me reading a book in a reading vlog, but also cooking a meal that is themed from the book. Maybe it's a meal that they ate in the book. Maybe it's a meal they talked about in the book. Maybe it's a meal that is the favorite of the author because I'm actually doing a memoir for today's vlog. But you get what I mean. It could even be that maybe it's a thriller and the thriller is in a certain state and I make like the meal that is best known from that state. You all said in my daily vlogs that you loved my cooking, and so this is my way of showing you more of my cooking along with my reading. So the book that I picked for this video is Gordon Ramsay's memoir, Humble Pie. I'm a huge fan of Gordon Ramsay, and I love watching a lot of his TV shows and competitions. They're really, really fun to watch. And he actually has this memoir, technically an autobiography, um, but I'm hoping to be able to make one of his favorite meals after I finish reading this book. So I'm gonna start reading this. It does have some pictures in it, which I think is really great. So I'm really excited for that. But then once I'm done with this book, we are going to cook a meal that either is Gordon's favorite meal to cook or something that he is like very well known for. I know that he is usually well known for beef wellington because that's like what everyone messes up in Hell's Kitchen. But I also think that he really likes fish and chips because he is from England. And I believe that he might have a video of him like showing how he makes his fish and chips. If you watch my July TBR, this book is also what I picked for my little card that I picked um, for read a book with a face on the cover. So if you watch my little TBR game every month, this book is for that prompt. I know that some people just really don't like him because they think that he is really mean, but I actually did know that he grew up in a very abusive household. I think his father was the abuser, and I didn't know a lot of these other things. I didn't know about his brother's heroin addiction, so I'm actually really excited to get to know more about him, and I hope that you guys are too. To be honest, I did not start reading when I thought I was because I was working on stuff for my new free little library that's going live tomorrow, but... I am now on page 28 and this first chapter is talking about Gordon Ramsay's dad and yes, he is definitely abusive. Gordon had like kind of quick talked about the beginning of his life and they were really poor because of the fact that his dad would kind of use all of the money in order to buy alcohol. So he was an alcoholic and extremely abusive. And it even says right here because um, his dad would beat his mom a lot and it was saying how it was a different time then. Domestic violence was still considered a private matter, something for couples to sort out between themselves. So it didn't even matter, like his mom would tell people like where she got bruises from or who, you know, that her husband was beating her. And they were just like, well, nah, who cares? It's just like so crazy to me. And Gordon already said that, cause he was the oldest, already started working in a kitchen, um, like after he had left the house. And then his uh, sister under him had already gotten pregnant as a teen and was really struggling with that. Um, and then I haven't quite gotten to his brother yet. And like, I, I'm assuming it's a younger brother, obviously, since Gordon is the oldest. I will say the writing style is a little hard to read because obviously it is very British. Um, but I am trying to just imagine Gordon Ramsay like saying this. I, I wish I had the audiobook for it, but I couldn't find it anywhere. So I feel like that would have made this book really great having Gordon narrate it. That would have been great. Okay, forgive me, I got mixed up. So Gordon is not the oldest. He does have an older sister, Diane. And I'm just finishing the first chapter, which was labeled dad or titled dad. Um, chapter two is going to be about football, but I was actually surprised how like emotional chapter one was because it talks about like his dad's death and you actually really get to see like a soft side of Gordon. Like he talks about just like how hard it was for him. He couldn't even like look at the body because he had like so much hatred, but also like pity for his father. And the sad part, at least like for me, I feel like he said he never tasted my cooking in the end, though even if he had, I doubt he would have been impressed. I just feel like that is incredibly sad that like Gordon is specifically known for his cooking and his dad didn't care about him at all to even taste it because uh, Gordon was already, I think he already, he said he was 
earning his second Michelin star by like the time his dad died or something like that. Um, so he was already like having his first kid. So he was definitely like old enough that his dad could have tasted you know, his food, but oh well. So I finally got to a little bit of food in the book, um, but I'm hoping we get to something better because this does not sound that great. He is talking about training for football, which is obviously soccer, but he said, he was in Scotland at the time. He said food in Scotland was bad then, unbelievably bad. It still is in most cases. It was pie and gravy, pie and beans. Ugh, I don't like beans very much. Or what the Scottish call a slice. These big square processed slabs of sausage meat. I didn't have what you'd call a sophisticated palate, but I couldn't stand it. Which is actually kind of funny because he does have a very sophisticated palate nowadays, I would think. So hopefully there's more food in this book because I do not want to have to make pie and beans. Ah, uh, here we go. Okay, so now we're talking about some food. It says, Mom was a good, simple cook. Ham hock soup, bread and butter pudding, and fish fingers, homemade chips and beans. So I'm hoping maybe I could find like a dish from his childhood. This book actually makes me laugh out loud. Um, where, right here, this paragraph. It's just funny. He says he sends this other chef a letter where he says, best wishes on keeping your two stars. And then I imagine him going green like the Incredible Hulk with Envy because I got three. <laughs> it's hilarious to me. I don't know why. All right, hello. It is time for us to make a Gordon Ramsay meal. I am not finished with the book yet, um, but I have a lot going on this weekend. Today is actually Wednesday. And tomorrow I have my IVF transfer, my next transfer, I'm so excited. But I have like absolutely no food in the house, so it's perfect for me to go to the store and to get something in order to make for tonight. I also have to go to the store because I have to buy all of the ingredients to make my brother's cupcakes for his wedding because his wedding is actually this weekend. So I have family coming in, staying at my house tomorrow as soon as we get back from the transfer. So it's gonna be a very busy weekend and I will not have time to like continue this vlog over the weekend. And so I didn't wanna wait all the way until like Monday or Tuesday. So I figured I need dinner tonight. Let's go ahead and cook tonight halfway through this vlog and then I will finish reading Reading the rest of the book later which who knows I might even do that for some of the other books if I get to a specific meal in the book I could always like stop and make that meal or make whatever that scene is from what I've been reading there actually hasn't been like anything that he's really talked about it's been a lot more about like his experiences with all these different chefs and working his way up and like that kind of stuff and so I think we're just going to go ahead and Google and see what happens uh, Gordon Ramsay's favorite meals favorite meal okay however ramsey has revealed his favorite american food is grits topped with shrimp and parmesan cheese oh okay that would be kind of like a really good meal for tonight and then okay what is gordon ramsay's most famous dish yeah i pretty much knew that like beef wellington was gonna come up but i honestly don't think i have time to make beef wellington today Plus I've never even actually like tried it before. Like, I don't know. I mean, okay, I'll, I'll look it up and I'll, we'll see what it entails. What are Gordon Ramsay's signature dishes? Well, I don't know. Beef Wellington is showing up a lot. I actually saw someone on TikTok do this. So if it was his last meal, he actually would want his mom's shepherd's pie, which also Alvin and I are a huge fan of shepherd's pie. And I saw on TikTok, they were following his recipe. So that's also a really big contender. Okay, so Gordon Ramsay does have like a whole website with like recipes and stuff. I actually never knew that. Gordon Ramsay's Beef Wellington. Is there a recipe? Beef Wellington recipe, here we go, let's see. Oh man, it's in grams. Okay, beef fillets, olive oil, Wild mushrooms, which I, I, I do have like re like some regular mushrooms I need to use up. Thyme, puff pastry, eight slices of Parma ham, two egg yolks for the red wine sauce. Ooh, I could get some red wine to drink. Four large shallots, 12 black peppercorns, splash of red, wa red wine vinegar, a bottle of red wine, beef stock. Let's see, this might not be too hard. I might actually be able to make Gordon Ramsay's Beef Wellington. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay, please watch this video. Okay, wrap each piece of the beef tightly and chill the layer of cling wrap to shape. Uh, chill overnight? I don't have time for that. 
chill for 30 minutes. Like so much of this needs to be chilled and it's already 4.14 in the afternoon. <sighs> I still have to go to the store. I've decided, okay, we're, we're gonna do Beef Wellington because this vlog would be a waste of my time if I did not cook Gordon's famous recipe. I mean, who would I be? So we're gonna make Beef Wellington, which I have never tasted before. I have never made before. What do I even make with it? Do I need to make something with it? Maybe I'll just do, I do have some potato. Maybe I'll just do like, oven roasted potatoes make it easy you know oven roasted potatoes and i have some like broccoli we'll just call it a meal everyone let's go to the store and get all of our ingredients okay some shallots we'll get this one all right definitely not on a budget for for tonight 15 dollars worth of a steak we'll just grab two for funsies also got some thyme all right some puff pastry. Can't reach the uh, beef stock. <laughs> Got it. All right, this is going here. All right, I googled it, and prosciutto is technically Parma ham. So get that. Don't look at this side. That's all for my cupcakes I have to make. This wouldn't be a Jackie video if we didn't get the best red wine in the world. Okay, back from the store. It does say to do a whole chill overnight with the beef in the cling wrap. I can't do that, obviously. Then it says do a quick sear of the beef fillets in a hot pan with a little olive oil for 30 to 60 seconds until browned all over and rare in the middle. Remove from the pan and leave to cool. So we're gonna do that first. And I'm going to do it in a cast iron pan because I am pretty sure uh, Gordon believes in cooking your steaks in cast iron a lot of the time. So, cast iron. I'm going to heat this up and put some olive oil in the pan. All right, I'm sure he would be disappointed in me wearing a glove, but I'm gonna use one still. We're gonna go ahead and put these on here. Now we're gonna get our sauce going. Technically, it is supposed to cook for an hour. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay, so we're making the red wine sauce. We are going to fry up the shallots with peppercorns, bay leaf, and thyme. So let's go ahead and cut those up all different sides. We're gonna slice up shallots here, put them in this pan. been flipping these so that way they can cook on all sides and we're just going to move them to rest. Now we're going to throw the mushrooms in here. So I actually have had them pre-sliced from a few days ago and I'm just going to rough chop them up here. All right, I'm just going to throw them in this pan that has the beef in it. Also going to put some thyme in this pan so i'm gonna just pull off some thyme leaves and i'm gonna put a few sprigs in with the shallots to make the sauce we're also going to add some peppercorns i thought i had some but we're gonna take it out of my salt shaker here, or pepper shaker here then we're also going to put a bay leaf. We're adding a little bit of red wine vinegar. So we're going to open our wine. We're going to pour some in there and some in here. Mmm, so delicious. That is the best wine. We're going to turn this up to a boil and let it cook down then so that way it gets a little thicker. The mushrooms I'm just going to put onto a plate here. A couple of these with salt and we're going to let them cool. All right, I got some potatoes from a local friend of their garden and so I'm just going to chop them up and we're going to roast them as a side. I'm just putting them in a cast iron and we're gonna roast them with some olive oil, some garlic, salt and pepper, 
and some thyme and rosemary. I have no idea if Gordon would approve of these potatoes. <laughs> All right, let's do olive oil and we're gonna do some more thyme. I'm going to do salt. I just have some dried rosemary here and some garlic powder. All right, I'm gonna throw this into the oven. Our wine is definitely cooking down. It smells really good. So this is almost completely all gone. Um, so we're gonna add the beef stock and then we're going to lower the heat and let it simmer. We have to put plastic wrap down. It says to place the slices of prosciutto down like that. We also want to season our steaks. Salt, pepper, some of this here. Let's make sure we have enough for all four, okay. Then we put one of these in here. We're going to wrap this up and we're going to also wrap it with this just to like get it all together. Oops. All right, that's one. Okay, now it's time to do the puff pastry. All right, so I definitely need to cut because I need it to be enough for four. Okay, it's gonna be a tight fit. All right, and we also need to get some egg yolks. All right, he says to um, beat these with a little bit of water and a pinch of salt. So this is our egg wash. Brush the pastry with egg. I actually don't have a, um, pastry brush, so Gordon Ramsay would be so mad at me. Then we're going to unwrap one of these and we're going to put this in here and then we're going to wrap Let's uh, see if I can get it to and then you're gonna wrap it like this in here so that way you can, which I guess I should do it this way. So that way you can do this. And then you like, do this. <laughs> like that. We are going to unwrap these now and we're going to score them and brush with the little bit of egg wash I have left. That one looks really good. Some of these I didn't really have enough puff pastry on the ends. Hey Google, what temperature is 200 degrees Celsius? All right, so we're gonna score the tops of these. Do it like this, I guess. And then we're going to brush with egg wash. This one really looks good, this one over here. If I had to serve Gordon, I'd give him that one. All right, and then I'm gonna put it in the oven for about 20 minutes. I don't know if you can see that, but that looks real good right now. This broccoli from a local farm, I just steamed it and put butter and salt and pepper and the sauce I'm going to pull off and strain as well. Here, so that way I can get out all the shallots and stuff. I'm just gonna Pour this in here. Okay, so we have our sauce here. Okay, oh my gosh, look at that. I pulled them out at the 20 minute mark and they're supposed to rest for 10 minutes. But I really hope that they're gonna be cooked through when I cut them in half. Let's, I don't know, this sauce looks a little thin. <laughs> Oh man, Gordon's gonna be so mad at me. Um, broccoli. I am not the plating expert at all. Even though I went to culinary school, I'm actually really bad at plating, unless it's a cheese board. I feel like I should cut one in half because I'm afraid it's not gonna be done. Oh man, look at that. Look at that. Moment of truth right here. Oh. 
me. Gordon Ramsay. Call me Gordon Ramsay. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Whew, that's hot, but like, is that not amazing? That is perfect. Perfect! Put me on Hell's Kitchen. So, technically, we're gonna put this like this. This one's the one that actually looks like perfect. Ooh. Oh yeah. Wow. <laughs> Shot. Gordon proud. I know, right? I think they cut the ends off of theirs in uh, Hell's Kitchen, but we can't waste, you know. Are you gonna tag him? Yeah. I'm gonna be like, yeah, you see this book channel? Okay, now we're gonna spoon a little saucy sauce on top here. Look at this. I know my plate's messy, but like, come on. Well, now we have to see if it even tastes good. <laughs> so there's like a mushroom topping and then there's prosciutto, the prosciutto down. And then you put like this mushroom, it's just like cooked mushrooms with thyme. Mm -hmm. And then you like wrapped that up and then you wrapped it in the phyllo dough. Yeah, but you like seared the meat first to get like just an outside sear on it. And then the sauce is like thyme, shallots, red wine, and beef stock. Like butter. I can see why people like it. It's really good with the with that dough. Crying. Look at that. Delicious. You think Gordon would be proud of me? I'm proud of you. I would definitely make this for like a fancy meal for like a small group of people. Me and you. Yeah, me and you. This is good. I'm very proud of myself that I could do this. That's pretty delicious. I would give myself. Okay, we're talking like if Gordon made it and me. I would give myself a six and a half. Oh, give yourself a seven. A seven? Okay, I'll give myself a seven. I just know that like, obviously, you were supposed to like chill the stuff like multiple times throughout like the wrapping process and I definitely didn't have time for that. So he would have called me a donut for that. <laughs> a donut. <gasps> okay, how crazy is this? I made Beef Wellington. We're watching the new episode of Master Chef, and he's literally gonna make a vegan Beef Wellington called a beet. Wellington. I love episodes though, like when he's cooking. Hey, I did that today. Look at that, that's what I did. Oh, I even did that thing, oh my gosh. Wow, I did that and the directions didn't even like tell me that. I just like remembered watching other people do that or watching him do it, whatever. Wow. Okay, I did not do that. We ate it all. Wow, that actually looks really pretty. Ooh, that looks great. Okay, even though I'm a huge fan of Gordon Ramsay, um, this book is not that great, honestly. But I finally got to the pictures. So here's Gordon at the age of four. Okay, so this is hilarious. This is him in his first chef outfit. And he says, I was so proud of those whites. Now, of course, I think that I look like a complete twat. I wouldn't be seen dead in that hat now. And I also had to wear that exact hat in culinary school. And I looked so stupid. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I had no clue. Oh my gosh, Gordon Ramsay. I had no clue that he had his kids by IVF, which explains their second and third children are twins. And look at that, it took them three tries to get their first baby, and then later they got their twins on the first time. That is crazy. Okay, so I finally got to some stuff that I'm like interested in. Um, we're in the chapter, Welcome to the Small Screen. And they were explaining about Kitchen Nightmares because Alvin and I really love watching Kitchen Nightmares. I actually think we're almost done because I think there's only like five seasons on like Hulu or whatever. And he was saying how like some people thought that they would like set up these places to be this way. And he was like, no, <laughs> it's definitely like that. And he said that 
there's absolutely no background before I get there so my reactions are all completely genuine. I never meet the restauranteurs in advance nor do I get to read their menus. The bottom line is the secret of the show lies in its rawness. I have a whirlwind eight or nine days at each restaurant to turn things around. We barely sleep while we're filming. We film between 70 and 80 hours of footage to make each 48 minute show. Uh, Alvin and I always look up like when we're done with an episode of Kitchen Nightmares, we always Google to see if the restaurant is still in business. And I mean, sometimes they are. And then sometimes we're like, ooh, permanently closed. I finished Gordon Ramsay's memoir. And unfortunately, the Beef Wellington was way better than the book. I'm sorry, Gordon, but I just don't think that he is a great writer. I don't know. I am deciding between two and three stars because I do really like Gordon Ramsay and I did learn some things that I didn't know about, obviously about like Kitchen Nightmares and Hell's Kitchen. That's what I was like mostly interested in learning about. And then I wanted to see like how he kind of became a famous chef. A lot of this was number one, it wasn't in like chronological order. It was by chapter subjects of things. Um, and number two, it was just a lot of random stories. Like it wasn't a, you know, this is how I was born. This is how I was raised. This is what I went through in my childhood. This is how I became a chef. Like it was just very sporadic. And I'm actually reading another memoir right now that's exactly the same where like, I don't like memoirs or autobiographies that are just these random bits of their information. Like pull it anywhere into the book. I did really enjoy the pictures. Those were a great addition. Um, and in the end, he had said something about how this might be made into a movie, but I think this was back in 2006. As far as I know, there is no movie, but maybe I'm missing out on a Gordon Ramsay documentary. I should probably Google that later. Even if you're a huge Gordon Ramsay fan, I don't know if I would actually recommend this to read because it, <laughs> it was just a lot of, information that I felt like wasn't that interesting, if that makes sense. But maybe you would like it better than me, I'm not sure. The Beef Wellington though, that was really good. And we actually got full. I thought we were gonna eat all four, which is why I bought four, but we actually got full and so there were leftovers and this whole past weekend was my brother's wedding. So I had family in town and we heated up one of the Beef Wellingtons because my like one brother was hungry and he was raving about it. And I was like, gosh, if you're raving about it and this is heated up filet mignon wrapped in puff pastry, like it must be good. So he really liked it. So that was good. I do think the recipe turned out really great. If I would be like an excellent chef and follow all the instructions correctly, it probably would have been very, very good, but I'm giving myself, I think I gave myself like a six and a half rating. Alvin said I should rate it to seven. Like the meal itself was good, but I'm talking about my own personal cooking, following directions correctly, like, you know, chefing it up. Um, I would say I gave a seven out of 10 um, in regards of following the recipe exactly correctly. So I actually really liked this series. I loved the cooking aspect of it. And I'm planning on, I think, reading Crying in H Mart next, which is another memoir, but I'm hoping to be able to fit it into my August TBR game. Um, if not, the other ones that I'm thinking about doing are The Storyteller by Jodi Picot, because I think that there's a baker in that one. And then someone else mentioned arsenic and adobo because they said there were a lot of recipes in that book as well and i think that's a cozy mystery if you have any other suggestions of books that i could do even if it's like a thriller but it involves like a specific state or a country i could make recipes like you know for that state or country um but yeah just drop me a comment down below because i am coming up with a list of books that i want to pair with these bookish inspired cooking vlogs so I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you guys very soon in another video. Bye everyone.